Well, ladies and germs, here we are, driving, with my handheld mount, and um, I'm going live because it's been quite a while since I made a video. Some of you people have been complaining about that, so uh, yeah, things just been busy. Anyway, um, it's time for a quick whist watch check, and uh, it's a ball. Now, you know... I'm going to find it a little difficult to keep this thing completely on camera. So let me just give you a little look at it here. A couple of facts about this particular ball. This is a ball hydrocarbon NEDU NEDU ball hydrocarbon engineer NEDU NEDU Navy experimental diving unit. This chronograph is good down to 600 meters, which is very good for a chronograph. It has screw down pushers, 44 millimeters. It's thick. It's got a modified 7750 in it. So it's not a super fancy movement, but it's very reliable, easy to service, that sort of thing. Um, however, it is um, upgraded to chronometer status. That is one of the modifications. That they, so they've regulated the snot out of it. Now look, you know what guys, this watch is definitively not for everybody, and I'm extremely well aware of that, and um, I, I, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with it, to be quite frank. So let's start with the stuff that I like. It is a sizable, big, chunky, beefy, aggressive-looking man watch. Um, the screw-down pushers, and then they have that patented uh, crown guard of theirs, which covers the crown. I mean, I, I like it. That, that crown guard and that aggressive nature of the of the beast that you have here on the on the wrist side of things I do like it um, and actually the, it serves a purpose it might look excessive but you cannot get that crown guard down and in its position it's, it's held by a ball bearing it, you cannot get it down and in its position if the crown is in the out position so if you adjust your watch and jump in the shower or the pool or the ocean, you, you're not going to forget it like you can with so many other. Talk to any watchmaker, and you know lots of them have had to gut watches that have gotten wet with the crown pulled out. So this solves that problem. Also, those screw-in pushers. This is, to the best of my knowledge, one of the only, if not actually the only, chronometer that has got gaskets in there as well as, I assume there's gaskets in there, as well as the screw down pushers, because you can push these pushers underwater and not damage or get water into the watch. Now, I can't exactly tell you why I would ever want to do that. Maybe if I was, uh, you know, in SEAL Team 6 and I was doing an underwater scuba thing and I needed to, yeah, who knows? I, I mean, as a practical matter, Nobody wearing this watch is ever even going to go down to 600 meters, let alone have a necessity to push the um, to push those pushers underwater. But it's just nice to know that you can. Um, I have a couple of other chronometers with screw down pushers, and I've been in the shower before, looked down, and realized, oh hell, I've got those pushers out, and worried, you know, about whether water would get up in the movement, which it never did. But it's the kind of thing that you might worry about anyway. Um, what else do I like about this watch? Well, it's it's a fairly massive watch, um, as I've said, but it is a combination of titanium and stainless steel. Now, what that does is it, it reduces the weight down to what I would call um, a substantial level, but it doesn't reduce it down to as light as like the, um, the Tudor Pelagos, which is admittedly a little smaller in terms of its uh, width. That's a 42 millimeter watch I want to say I believe this is 44 and this is thicker um, now mind you that Tudor has got at least the new generation with the in-house movement it's got a nicer movement uh, you know than this but I don't know why I got sidetracked there I think it was because of the titanium that's a fairly light watch and this is a substantial watch doesn't feel light um, however if it was all steel I know from comparison to some of the other 44 millimeter all steel watches I have you get wrist fatigue uh, which I don't with this watch. Um, also, when you're dealing specifically and only with titanium, you, you, everything is like this dull gray, which you see on the outer side of the links there. But those center links are high polished stainless steel, which makes for very nice contrast. I don't know how well that's shown up here, but 
it, it does make for super nice contrast in terms of the look. And um, I, I love that clasp, but that's a double butterfly signed clasp. Really nice. Got the RR for railroad because Ball Watch got, got its start as a railroad watch. Um, to, to sum up a couple of other things, the uh, action of the bezel is excellent. Um, that for me is a real bugaboo. Uh, watches with back play in the bezel. That's a, just a boner killer. And this doesn't have that. This has got really good action there. So I'm fond of that. Um, and the other thing, the thing that really makes this watch for me in so many senses is the, it's got tritium tubes and there are lots and lots of tritium tubes. So what looks like baton markers there um, are actually flat but um, thick glass tritium tubes and they glow for 25 years straight. You do not need to charge them. Um, the, the, the hour marker and the tip of the chronometer second hand all have um, small uh, little thin diameter tritium tubes on them and they are red so uh, everything else is green so basically you can tell the time in a cave underwater you know wherever you are that's never going to be a problem for 20 25 years and then you'd need, need to get the dial changed well i'm 60 years old so i'm not entirely well i'll be i'm not, not quite but almost 60 so i don't think i'll need to be worrying about this dial <laughs> it's it's sort of like you get to a certain age you quit buying green bananas so um so uh, Paul says, uh, this, I'm getting watches that are on steroids and that this is a beast and it's true. And, and I'm going to kind of sum up a little bit on this point. It is a beast. I mean, this thing is just a monster. Is, is, it, a, is it a shitter? Well, you know, in some senses it is. Um, in other senses, no. Listen, its price point of $5,400 retail is nuts. Okay, I would never pay that for this watch. Um, However, I, I bought it on eBay with box and papers, and it, it's it's accoutrements are very cool. It, it came with um, like a buoy, a dive buoy, all kinds of cool stuff, and I paid I think twenty three, twenty four hundred dollars for it. So you know, from that standpoint, I'm happy with my purchase. Um, oh, also, like I don't know if you're going to be able to see here, but um, well, hold on, I got to open that. Bear with me. Bear with me a second. Okay, so um, I've pulled out that little uh, keeper or crown guard, and um, you can see there's a kind of a halo or a ring around the end of that crown. That's a helium escape valve. So, um, and here you get a watch, a look at the watch uh, with the crown guard open. So that helium escape valve is like in actually integrated right into the watch, which is kind of nice because I think they're ugly. You know and pointless so if you have usually they're here on this flank of the watch this one's hidden um, I'm gonna close that give me a sec um, so listen here's my here's my final take on this thing this thing is such an aggressive beast that is just the best way we could put it it's such an aggressive beast that basically sometimes I got to take it off and wear something more refined so I don't get tired of it Otherwise, I like it very much. So this is the Ball Hydrocarbon Nidu Experimental Dive Unit Manly Beast of a Watch. Hope you like this video. Thanks, guys.